welcome back to a Arkham Horror the Card Game playthrough. This is the War of the Outer God scenario pack. I'm using Trish Scarborough from the Inside Conspiracy campaign. Just brought her over and inserted this standalone series into the campaign itself. Um, if you haven't already seen my review for this scenario pack, I'll leave a link for it below. Check that out first because this will contain spoilers. Um, I'm going to read the setup text and then I'll explain a few of the, how the things work, the agendas, the factions, the warring keyword. So War of the Outer God reads... Over a decade after the Great War, another kind of war has come to Earth, a conflict wrought by factions long hidden in the shadows of society. It began with the murders in Arkham, over a dozen bodies in half many days. The police thought the perpetrator to be a serial killer at first, until the sixth victim's corpse turned up as a mangled heap of meat and viscera, like a meal chewed up and spit back out. No human could perform such a grisly murder. When similar killings started to sprout up in other cities across North America, you sought to uncover the truth. A serial killer could not be in Arkham, Providence, Montreal and New York City all at once. It had to be the work of organisation, but that wasn't all you discovered. There were commonalities between many of the victims, sorting them into three distinct groups. In Providence, many victims were older, well educated. In Montreal, those killed lived in the woods outside the city, or had professions dealing with nature, or biology and some capacity. In New York, bodies turned up deep in the sewers, underground subway tunnels, their identities shrouded in mystery. Spent the last few weeks trying to unearth the truth behind his murders and the various factions carrying them out. In this time, the conflict has grown exponentially. Massacres, bombings, sighting of strange ceremonies in the streets, entities blotting out the stars in the night sky, swarms of locusts like insects dividing people al alive, mutated lizard creatures prowling in the sewers, and worse yet, while Arkham seems to be the conflict's epicentre, these incidents are spreading all across the world. It's no ordinary war, and not one the authorities can deal with. You're the only one who spets the truth. Somehow, you have to find out these factions are fighting over it. Put a stop to the conflict before it consumes the entire world and it's madness. Okay, so first off, you're going to notice this game, that this story pack is about three factions, three different cults, each of the distinct styles, their own ancient one, their own treacheries and enemies. And each one has their own colour, green, blue and red. The green is the cult of Magan Arkat. Blue is the cult of Salinus. And red is the cult of Ezel Zen Rizel. Each one also has patterns on the cards and identify them with. Um, I think the red ones have inset wings. Blue ones have uh, stars, constellation patterns, and green ones have scales and tendrils. So you can, the cards are all distinctly different. Currently, we have the World of Gods set in play. And set aside, there are three separate encounter sets for one of the, each of the agendas. One of the advance, you pull cards on that agenda, and then see who wins. The idea of this having factions in the lead and warning. So what basically they have here is the we have faction order. Now the game does tell you to put these in order, the green, blue and red. You put the agendas here so you know which one first. This means that cause of warring and when you put doom on the agendas you do it in faction order. So that means it will go on the green first, then the blue, then the red. Same with enemies. Enemies when they're warring and when they're doing things the green ones will move and attack first, then blue, then red. You can, if you wish, change the order up a little bit because usually ones such as the green in the lead first may sort of win first, but it's up to you, depends how you play the game. It might seem a little strange having three agendas, three different factions, three different cults. It's kind of fun to see who's going to win. A lot of enemies in this game have aloof, aloof and warring, so a lot of times you're not going to actually be fighting the enemies themselves, but you can engage if you wish, that's, that's fine. They're going to fight each other whilst you're going to go around and try to do the investigating, get the clues, progress. And the idea is certain factions are going to progress more than others. Certain things will happen, they'll get killed off or effects will happen and certain factions will be in the lead. The ones in the lead have their agenda flipped first, ever, you go through the three agendas and the final one is flipped over, the other two agendas move out the game and they become the sole purpose, the sole goal of the game. Each one has their own ancient one, their own enemies and so it's kind of fun to see which one you're going to get. So it'll be the at card first, so the at reads for the outer gods Three Zellius cults have emerged from the shadows and their schemes are engulfing Earth in all-out war. You must find out why the cults are fighting put a stop to their battle. So any amount of doom is placed on a player card, place that amount of doom on any agenda as well. The objective may only spend the amount of clues if no cultist enemies are in play. So, we need three clues. Um, what else have we got here? So, let's look at the locations first. So we start off in Arkham here. We have Streets of Montreal, Streets of Providence, the uh, Althanium of the Empty Sky, the Arcade. Shrine of Magan Arkat, Chateau Ramsay, Streets of New York City, The Burning Pit, and The Penthouse. Now each location is sort of like associated with each enemy. Most of the green enemies will spawn the Shrine of Magan Arkat up there. Most of the blue enemies will spawn the Anathenian and the Stars. 
and most of the red insect enemies will spawn in the burning pit. So you kind of know where they're going to be at all times, so it's kind of helpful to know where they're going to be, which is going to spawn next. So the warning keyword, I explained this in my review, but I'll go through it again. When the warning keyword is in play, in the hunter enemy phase movement, enemies of warning will also move. Obviously they move in faction order, so the green will move first, and then blue, and then red. They move like hunter enemies would. They move towards an opposing enemy, either red or blue, whatever's closer, and so forth. When they've all moved in faction order, they will attack each other in faction order. You add up the horror and damage values. You add up the attack and sanity values. So each one here only has one damage to each other. If one dies, they all have certain effects. And basically they're all warning between each other to kill each other. And um, we'll look at one of the cards now. So this is the Zilliot of Paradise. So you can see here it has two fight, two health, and three evade. He's a cultist. He has a loof. Well, a lot of enemies have a loof and warning keyword. It was a shrine of Morgan Arkats, and at the end of the round, if no blue or red enemies are in play, place one doom on the green agenda. So they're all trying to each work towards getting their own agenda forward. And at the same time, you're in between running back and forth doing investigation. So I'm talking too much here, we're going to just crack on playing and see how it works out. So we start off in Arkham. Let's look at the location. It's a trial value of five. It's got one clue, it's a ritual site, town, kind of attachment. So you can spend one clue, sorry, spend one resource, move to catching location as a free action. So Let's draw our cards first and see what we're going to get. So one, two, three, four, five. So we've got two seven of on onyx, which is going to be we need three to get a pendant of the queen, which is the that's going to be the first time I actually got that in the campaign so far. Encyclopedia is a good card because basically you can exhaust it and give plus two to a skill test um, end of the phase. Um, easy mark has myriad, so it's three in the deck. You can gain two resources and draw a card. And after you play Easy Mark, play another Easy Mark from your hand at no extra cost. So it's good to save these um, later on because you can play more than one for free. And finally, we have Lone Wolf, which is great in solo because um, when your turn begins, if no other investigates in the location, get on resource. So we're just going to um, we're going to play Lone uh, Wolf. It's an asset; doesn't take any slots, so it's handy to have. We're also going to play uh, Encyclopedia. So that's two actions gone to give us extra skill boosts. Now these both have the fast keyword, so we're going to play both of these because they have the fast keyword and take one action. We're just going to put them like that, stacked up. That's them out of the way. So we've gone two actions, we've played two things. Uh, we're going to do last action, we're going to investigate and get a clue because we need three clues to proceed. Now I also need to get killed the close enemies as well because I can't progress while these are in play. But as I found out, they'll kill each other on themselves and hopefully I just pick off the winner. So I'm going to let them just fire so you'll see how they fire each other. So we're going to try and gain a clue here. We're going to exhaust the Sacopedia to give us plus two to our uh, intellect to gain a clue. We need, so we got six against five, draw to zero, so that's plenty, so we gain one clue. So off to a good start already. So in our enemy phase, so obviously warring and in faction order, that means that the green enemies will move first. So we'll probably move this to here. Then the blue, which will also move uh, to here. Then the red, which can't get close to that, the closest it can be to, is probably going to be here. So you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out where the enemies move. So I'll just show you the other enemies so you can get a good look at what these are. So I really like how each enemy here has different kind of styles. I mean, the blue enemies are all celestial beings, like astronomy, stuff and it's like a weird, deep, cold void of the stars, trying to bring down some weird cosmic deity from the skies. It has three attack, two health, one evade. Spawns in the sky, and like the other ones, if no other enemies, place Doom on the agenda. The Sapua Swarm are all sort of weird, insect like, locust horde kind of enemies. Has two stats all across, one's at the Burning Pit. So, sorry, that was there, that was there. So now the enemies have moved, they're going to attack each other. So, obviously, the green will attack first, so it'll put one damage on the blue enemy. Enemy will attack first, the blue will attack second, sorry, so one damage on there. That's the enemy phase. So also they've got a loof, so don't actually engage us. So we read your peppin and draw a card. Lena Harper from the previous um Into our Conspiracy expansion. Um, we put do on the agendas. So obviously we put do on the agendas, so we do it in agenda order. So we go green. They all have a threshold of six, I should say. Um we so just before I put these on, let's have a quick read of the agenda so you can see what they are. The incubation of the egg. In a profane place hidden from society, an entity siphons all willy heat from another dimension. So we have a global doom threshold of 6 per group. 
Uh, when it advances, um, you just when it advances, we all doom from it and uh, put the excess doom on the next agenda. So if you want to get more than one doom, one go, it goes to the next agenda. And then we have the blue, my favourite, the summoning of Stalinus. Deep in the cosmos of another dimension, something begins to seep through the veil between worlds. Same again, it has six. And the population of the swarm, from a pit deep within the crust of the earth, something horrid begins to emerge. So they all have six, and they're all pretty similar. So, and they also act kind of similar too, but they're all, they're all quite fun. So I've done doing the event agenda, we draw an encounter card, and we have a while they sleep treachery. Each faction has the most enemies in place. Place one doom on that faction's agenda. If enemies in play, place a doom on the sleep gains surge. That would mean each faction gains one doom, which is a bad treachery to have straight away, but there we go. So that's that on there. Now for our go, we gain... So I should have gained a resource last time, so we gained a resource because of Lone Wolf. We'll, try, we'll go for try play Lena Harper soon, which gives an extra intellect and evade. And the first action before each turn is not for attacks of opportunity, which is going to help us out. So we're going to now we're going to move to let's see. I mean, I could move to there. They've got aloof. They're not really going to attack me much. Um, let's go to the streets of Providence. So we'll put this over. Uh, it has four shard value, one clue. You can do two actions, deal three damage to a non-ancient one enemy at Providence location in any group, and then once per game. So some location, all locations here have really cool, different, neat effects. Some let you damage enemies. Some let you gain clues by testing from the token pool, so you can gain clues really easily. Uh, we'll put a clue on this. So we've moved. We're going to gain a clue again. So we're going to investigate with Encyclopedia for the skill boost. Ship cast bag, and we get a minus one, which is enough. We get a clue. Then we're also going to travel to the let's see, a theme of the anti sky. Let's go there. So, each of the let's just say the spawn locations the shrine, the pit, and the athevium each have a three action. Draw start card the encounter deck and place one ward on the agenda. Associated with each faction. So this put let's put a ward on the blue agenda, this on the green agenda, this on the red agenda. A ward is basically like a seal, a protective seal. If events one doom being added, if it will be added, move that ward instead, which is kind of cool. But you like I say you've got to draw the card encounter deck, so it's a risk reward uh, situation. So we have moved, investigated, moved. That's the end of our go. Now for the enemy phase, so some enemies are gonna die here. Let's see what happens. So these won't move because there's already an enemy there. This guy will try to get to them, but he probably can't quite go there, so he'll probably go to Arkham first. There we go. Enemy phase, green attacks first, because like I say, it's faction order. So, he is gone. He can't fight back because he's dead. So, the blue enemy is gone. I'll put it down here, sorry. That's the end of the enemy phase. Um, doing the agenda. So, that's got, we've all got three on. Two, three, draw an encounter card. We have another Nalistic Stargazer. It spawns the Ethereum of the Anti Sky. It has, has a loof, so we're okay. Now, luckily, that's just saved us because if that didn't spawn, this has at the end of the round, if no blue grid enemies are in play, place one doom on the green agenda. So this would actually make the agenda go first. Most of the enemies in Treachery this game are all working towards get their own agenda pushed forward because they each have their own goals, their own end game. So that's pretty fun. Um, ready up, sorry. Should I draw a card? My bad. Another segment of the Onyx. We can get that out. Uh, our turn begins. We should gain two resources. My bad. Gain two resources. So, what we're going to do is I want to play seven of Onyx, but I can't need Elena Harper. We're going to play Elena Harper. We're going to just use up resources. One, two, three, four. Give us extra intellect and evade. Already high intellect and evade of four each. So, now we are going to let's see. We need to gain one more clue. And then we're going to focus on killing off the enemies. So investigate for three. We might as well uh, boost. We've got five with uh, Elena Harper. We should be okay. We don't need to use Encyclopedia. You watch, we'll get it also fail now. Minus two. That's our six. Yeah, that's okay. Gain the clue. Now we need to kill enemies. So we can't quite kill the Stargazer. We've got to engage it to fight it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just focus my game, I'm getting the clues ready for the next uh, round 
and let these guys kill each other off to have it progress. So I can't progress yet because it's called enemies in place. So we're going to just let's move somewhere else. Let's move down to the arcade. So the arcade reads Sharp value of two, one clue. And this is really cool. So I can test for agility. If you succeed, you gain one clue from a token pool. What that means is from a token pool, so there's no limit to how many I can get, which is which is really good. So we've gained a clue, we've moved, and we're just going to investigate again to get another clue. So investigate again. At minus one, yep. Oh, my bad. Minus one. So we've got four clues now. We've got plenty of clues, but we're going to wait for the enemies to uh, kill each other off. So enemy phase, green moves first. So we can't quite get to the field of the empty sky. So it's probably going to move to the arcade. Sorry, the uh, arc, I'm sorry. Um, green will move probably uh, to there because he can get to Arkham next. Red won't move. Um, green's going to fight first. Does one damage to the red enemy. And then red, will, then blue can't find anyone. No one's there. Uh, red fights back. Red will kill the uh, Zealot Paradise. It's kind of fun watching enemies kill each other. You spend so much time in Arkham Parry. Trying to avoid monsters and try and like stop them from killing each other, but th this is just fun watching fight each other. So green's gone. So uh, enemy phase. So upkeep, we're going to draw a card. Hyper awareness. That's going to be pretty handy. Give us extra intellect and evade. In a resource. Um, doing the agendas. So they're all on four currently. And our next encounter card will be another zealot of paradise, which spawns up here. <laughs> We've got to still look here again because if that would have not happened, it would have got extra doom on the red agenda. Now that's all fine, well and good. You think you don't, you know, it's not affecting you much. But the more the agenda advances, it gets harder and harder because each agenda has its own set of big bad enemies. They all have sort of three weak enemies, one bigger enemy, one tough enemy, and one ancient one, which is really tough. So we're quite even so far. We're doing quite well, but still we need to kill, we need to kill the closest enemies so we can't quite progress just yet. But we're doing we're doing okay. So, our turn begins, we get an extra resource. I'm going to play 7 of Onyx because it's fast. Triggers. Um, so, set this out of play. I'm bringing Pen of the Queen, which obviously is a bounded card. Has three charges. When the charges are gone, set aside and put the three sets of copies of 7 of Onyx back into your deck. I can exhaust Pen of the Queen, spend one charge, choose a reveal location and select one. Move to that location. Sort of cool that location. Or evade the enemy at that location. That's going to be really good. So I'll put that there. It's the first time I actually use this. It's quite exciting. So I've got that out. Pen of the Queen. Okay, so... I mean, I could try and kill something, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, so... Queen's going to move first. It's going to move to there. Let's go to... So we've... We'll move to... We'll go there, and then we'll go back down there. So one, two, then we'll move to the streets of Montreal. So this has four shroud, one clue. For two actions, you can deal three damage to non H1 enemy at a Montreal location once per game. I like them all being open, so I know where to go. So I'm trying. I need them if I need to attack enemies. It's gonna be helpful for me later on. So that's we've done three things. That's how I go over. So faction order again. They move to there. Blue moves probably to there. That won't move because the enemy's already there. Green can't do anything. Blue hits first. This dies. Okay, that's that gone. Got to do some fighting soon. That's out of the way, so that enemy's gone. If I spawn an enemy next, there's something going on. Okay, so upkeep, draw a card. Flashlight, getting a resource, doing the agenda. They're all on five now, so they're going to flip soon. Count a card. <sighs> That's a green enemy, I suppose. It's not a cultist, though, so it's okay. Uh, some green enemies have the mutate keyword. Red, the red have a lot of um, swarming keyword from Genius Campaign, and then the green have the mutate keyword. So this has um, aloof, retaliate, and warring. Uh, three attack, three health, one evade. Spawns at a shrine, like every green enemy does. At the end of the round, place one resource on Bring of Paradise as a mutation. Then if there are three one mutations on it, remove two of them and place two doom on the green agenda. Okay. Goes there. At the end of the round, there's no red enemies in play. Place one doom on the blue agenda. Oh, sorry, that should, that should go first. Sorry, so the green one goes first. Place one doom on the green agenda. So this agenda flips. So obviously, don't forget about the faction order. So this is going to flip first. 
which is key because whichever one flips first has certain effects. So the green agenda flips over. So this reads, deeper than the walls of the sacred shrine, our cats, the egg of paradise begins to stir. For the first time in the history of the earth, a shape can be seen on the other side of the egg scale, translucent surface, an embryo, moiling and writhing as its hideous alien body develops. If you play on low mode, add one of the tokens to the chaos pack. We're not, we're okay. Uh, shuffle two of the set aside bring of paradise, paradise enemies and three hunt down treacheries into the counter deck and put the pile into the counter deck. If it's the first agenda to advance to 1B, spawn the set aside horrific Shoggoth enemy at the Shrine of Magan Arcat. Which is really fun because if I had the blue one go first, it would have a different enemy. Red one would have been different by enemy, so that's pretty fun. Flip back over to agenda 2A, so this reads uh, from the from the deep, this reads from the agenda 2A reads from each drop of embryotic liquid that rolls off the egg surface, horrible creatures gestate. Ancient of Paradise, or so the cult of Arcata believes, has six gender again. So we have to shuffle in the green uh, enemies. So we have the Bringer Paradise enemies, which are the ones that are on the board, and the Hunt Down Treacheries. We'll put them there. Shuffle these into the counter deck, along with the discard pile. We're going to bring out the first sort of toughish enemy, the horrific Shoggoth, which is this guy right here. So he has uh, four health, four attack, two evade, uh, retaliate, and warring. So horrific Shoggoth gets one damage for each mutation on it, and when it attacks, puts one resource on it as a mutation. So it's going to get bigger and bigger. It does have a loof, so you've got to be careful for this. But it does have warring, so I can let this kill other things for me. So this is going to spawn at the. Uh, it's going to spawn. Sorry. I'm pretty sure it's at the shrine. Yep, the shrine. This goes up here. Uh, our turn begins now. Oh, sorry, the blue one will advance as well because that one's the same. So the blue one advances now too. So this reads The temperature plummets by 20, 40, 60 degrees. The cold is bizarre, not only for the time of the year, but also the way in which it digs into your body, like needles piercing your skin. In the sky, the clouds unfurl into uncanny winged shapes, beasts with gaping mouths and serrated teeth, all encircling like vultures waiting for the right moment to descend and feed. Shuffle two set aside ethereal entity and enemies, and three inevitable end treacheries in the count scar pile. And this is the first gen to advance from the set aside hoon stitch held enemy at uh, Empty Sky, which it doesn't. And next agenda reads The cult of the Empty Sky predicted these events many years ago, now they will live out the ending that they have forgot long foreknown. So we set, spawn in the set aside blue enemies, so the ethereal entities. So we've got two poorest enemies left. When you kill the poorest enemies, we'll be okay. So I've got to watch out for that horrific shogger now, it's going to start moving around. So, so we begin, so we gain a resource. So we're just going to play, we moved on there, we're going to play easy mark to gain two resources and draw a card. 45, 25 pistol, we're going to play that for some extra firepower, costs 4, that's 4 ammo, spend 1 ammo, fight, if that attack enemy is exhausted, you get plus 2 and deal 1 damage to the attack, put that down there, yeah, put the ammo to it, so we've moved, we've moved, we've played that, played that, we're okay, so end of our go, so enemy phase, the green enemies move first obviously, this moves down here, they both move down there, Green one attacks first, then blue, so one damage on each, like so. Uh, draw a card, working a hunch, give me an extra clue, gain a resource. Uh, draw an encounter card, Zelda Paradise again, up here. <laughs> You're definitely going to get that green agenda, I can see it coming, after a big fight. Um, doing the agendas, so red one flips. The red one reads, Black clouds descend on cities of the earth, but they are not storm clouds, they are soaring masses of azeal, swarms of monstrous insects that fill the sky and the streets of incessant buzzing. The droning of the hive is constant, a present reminder of what might come if you fail to stop them. Shuffle three of the four set aside trilog enemies and the two transmogrify treacheries. If it's the first, it to advance for the remaining set aside trilog enemy. It does not. So, the end of two reads, for the cult of assimilation, the appearance of the swarm of the heralding of a new era, the rebirth of sorts into a higher form and ascendance. It's pretty ominous. So we shuffle in the red enemies now. So the trilogue 
and the inevitable end. So end the round. There's no bet enemies in play. So I'm doing the I'm doing the agenda. I've got to do that uh, twice because there's two enemies like that. And then one for the blue one too because there's no enemies in play. Sorry, the blue one. Okay, so we've got to kill these two. We just need to kill. Uh, well, you kill three of these. It's quite a lot. Okay. So let's do some fighting now. So they've only got two uh, attack. So we shouldn't need to do it too much. We're going to exhaust Sacopedia to get plus two to our attack. We're going to fight. Uh, let's fight the uh, Paradise of the Paradise. Alder sign. We so we get to a plus two. It's an investigation. We're not, so it doesn't matter. So that's gone. That's dead. That's to engage first for that. We're gonna have to, so we can't engage again. They're gonna move down here and kill this guy. Hmm. We kind of got a hire from the horrific Shoggoth. Uh. Let's run away. Let's run to the uh, streets of New York City. Deal three damage to an ancient on enemy in New York City location. Um, and has four shroud and one clue. Move to that out of the way. I'll go over. Green's move first. It's going to move to there. It's going to move down to there. That won't move because it's a. Uh, in the way. So green attacks first, this is definitely dead. That's the side. Um, upkeep, draw, magnifying glass. I can't need more damage really. Uh, doing the agenda. You can see the green agenda going first. It's in the lead. It's in the faction lead. Counter card. Hellfire. Pretty cool artwork. Uh, test agility for if you fail, either take two damage or place two clues of your clues on your location. If you fail, have four more clues, do both instead. So test for agility. We are going to, let's see. Commit hyper awareness for a plus one. We've already got one, so it's six agility against. <laughs> I'll decide again. So, okay for that, that's that done. Okay, we need to kill the Zealot of Paradise. Let's see, what can we do? <laughs> the green, oh, sorry, end of the round. That should have done, Esher Doom, because of that. If we just kill the Court of Paradise, we can advance, so we're gonna move to, oh, how do we get to there? How can we get to the uh, streets without dodging these guys? Um. Let's see. Ah, Pen of the Queen will do nicely. We're going to spend a charge, exhaust this, choose a real location, move to that location, and we are going to discover a clue there as well. There we go. Exhaust that. Uh, we're going to engage this guy. Okay, so we've engaged him. We're now going to. Uh, we're going to have to fight and evade. Oh, this is hard. We're going to evade. So he's exhausted briefly. He's going to hit his next go, but we can probably take it. Uh, minus two, four, five, just enough. So that's evaded. End of our go, enemy phase. These both move back up to, uh, up to there. Engage of us. We'll put one sanity on Elena Harper from the uh, horrific Shagoth and one damage on Elena Harper too. Oops, I've done that. Sanity and damage. We've got to place a, a resource. Oh, both sets of two resources on that, my bad. I forgot to do that. Uh, after that attacks, place a resource on that. So he gets plus one damage for each resource on it, each mutation. Uh, upkeep, draw a card, magnifying glass again. Uh, a resource, uh, doing the agendas. So five, four, three, they're all getting quite tense now. 
Trilog, Trilogog, sorry. So these are a creature insects. They have three attack, one health, one evade. Spawn of Burning Pit. When it attacks, it deals with either its damage or its horror instead of both. That's from the warning keyword. It has Swarming too. So Swarming also means we take top three cards of our deck and place it underneath, acts as copies of the enemy. That's annoying. End the round, uh, Esh Doom on the green agenda. The greens advanced again. It's getting quite close with the greens in the lead. Okay, this flips over. A crack appears on the surface of our cats. The air takers of the egg genuflect something to make themselves in reverence to the entity hatching within. The crack glows, winding up and down arc at scaled surface. Everescent green slime bubbles from the fissure and spills into the shrine's altar. Mag'an, Mag'an, Mag'an. The devotees rejoice. Paradise is upon us. So, we're not doing that. It's We've got the shop of enemy out already. Uh, if, the first fan events, if it's the first agenda to advance 2B, it's for the set aside Val Brewmaster enemy, a shrine of Mag'an Arcat. Well, that doesn't sound very nice. The Val Brewmaster. So this is one of the big enemies. Always big. So he's a monster mutated elite. Four attack, seven health, three evade. Hunter retaliates. It's plus one health for each mutation on it. So when one more mutations will place on an enemy, place one additional mutation on that enemy. Okay. And then at the end of the round, place a resource here. Take two off there and place two doom on the green agenda. Green's miles ahead in this game. We are not doing well. <laughs> Okay, so that's ready up, sorry. So we've got all the enemies engaged with us at once. These are quite weak. I can probably take them. This guy is not, so we're gonna have to look at this ability to deal three damage to an each one enemy. We're gonna kill this. Our last action, we're just gonna fight the Zealots of Paradise enemy. So or should we evade? Should we evade? We actually, we, no, we're going to fight. We need to kill it, really. If we move, we're going to get attacked. So, attacked again. This is going to attack us next go. Ah, so. We'll evade the horrific Shoggoth. Because it's bigger. Plus one. That's evaded. I'll go over it. Enemy phase. That moves. We take. One damage, which will put on Elena Harper from uh, the Zills of Paradise, and then two from the Valve Brewmaster and one Sanity. Taking a pound in here. Uh, draw a card. Oh, in the shadows. Oh, why was that last turn? I need that last turn. That should go in handy, though. That should go in handy. <laughs> That's kind of say it's lower, actually. Thank God for that. So, uh, doing the agendas. The blue one is nearly advancing. Uh, cow card bring a paradise again up at the shrine so that sucks um, now it's time for let's see end of the round doing the agenda looks a stupid zilla of paradise this rays up so now our turn getting a resource we're going to play in the shadows it's a great card fast play a start at your turn Disengage from each engaged enemy of you. It's the end of the round. They cannot engage you. You can't do damage to enemies. So again, disengage from all enemies. And we're going to rightly uh, bugger off, <laughs> should I say. We're going to go. We're going to leave. Um, so we're going to run off. We're going to run down to Arkham. And then we're going to run to the streets of Providence. So that's one, two... And then end of our go, we're just going to draw a card. Last action, uh, Leo De Luca. I'll go over. So we've got the warring. So they're going to move. Let's see. They're going to move to uh, down to Arkham. He's also going to move. Probably going to move to the streets of New York. They're going to fight each other, fight it out. Um, draw a card, sneak attack, gain a resource, do the agenda, blue's going to flip, blue agenda flips, this is getting quite tricky, so blue flips over, 
As the hue mists disperse, strange constellation twinkle beyond the void of space. You are filled with a curious feeling that you're being watched by thousands upon thousands of eyes that you cannot see. Also, the nexus, the event predicted by the astronomers and nihilists, approaches the end of all life, the end even of all endings. That's pretty ominous. Uh, we need to shuffle the hoon stitched herald into the uh, encounter deck, and that's that gun. Uh, the summoning nears completion, the end is nigh. Well, that's ominous text. I like the blue one, it's just if it has a more ominous feeling than anything else. Um, shuffle the hoon stitched herald enemy. He sounds fun. Into the encounter deck. That's that. End of the round, place a resource on Ranger of Paradise. Let's do on the green agenda. Oh, the green agenda advances. And the red one advances too. <laughs> so green advances first. Oh no, this isn't going to be good. The egg's going to hatch. That magan, oh, kept things coming. No. Okay, this reads. Incubated by the energies of the whole dimension, the egg of our cat has hatched. But its caretakers were wrong, so very, very wrong. There'll be no paradise on earth. The entity that stood within the Arkat is no heavenly being, no spirit of justice or righteousness, nothing capable of intelligent thought at all. It's a rampaging monstrosity that knows only hunger, death, and destruction. Uh, put the whole dimension into play. Uh, go to the destruction side face up. So this is the whole dimension. There we go. So it has a shroud value of six. It's kind of have attachments next to each ritual site and vice versa. You can test intact or willpower here too. If you succeed, spend three clues to move two clues from around the whole dimension or deal two damage to an H1 enemy. To see by three or more, deal three damage instead. That's going pretty handy. I'll put that there in the middle. And also, spawn the set aside Magan Arcat enemy at Hub Dimension. And then it has basically. Search the encounter deck, discard pile, and play area for all blue and red encounter cards and remove from the game. Remove each agenda and act from the game, put a set aside egg hatch agenda into play. So, what happens is, whatever agenda, whatever agenda the faction wins, everything else goes. So, the green agenda goes, the blue agenda goes, the red agenda all goes. Not only that, but the enemies and all cards go. So, they all go from there. This guy goes. They go back under my deck. The axe basically gone. I've got to just filter through here. Anything that's blue or um, red has to go. They're all gone. Green's in the lead. Green is the winning faction. See how I've played this about three or four games now, and red's won twice. So if you put the blue or red one at the top of the faction order, they might win instead if you want to try a different ending. There we go. Always out of the way. So now the new act is quite simple. The egg hatches. Each green enemy loses aloof, loses warring, and gains hunter. We will defeat the Magan Arcat enemy. Okay, so this big thing is here. The Child of Paradise doesn't look very nice. It has three attack, five evade. It will help pull of eight progressator. Hunter massive retaliate. Mythos phase ends, remove one resource, also oh, place one resource each mutated enemy at Mag and Arcat's location. As a mutation, do one damage to investigate it at this location for each mutation of Mag and Arcat. So that's going to be really, really annoying. Okay, that's there. So, we've got to kill this thing. How do we do that? What we're going to do is we're going to use Pendant of the Queen. Exhaust it. Move to relocation, or has to evade enemy location. Pen of the Queen is amazing. So he's evaded. What we're going to do now is. We're going to hit it while we can. Sneak attack, first of all, two damage towards the enemy. That's two straight off. One, two. We're going to fire off our pistol. It's exhausted, it's so got plus two, one damage. So it's already got. Three damage so far, which is pretty good. So we've got five against three, five against uh, three. Might be okay for this. Let's see, plus one. Yes, that's good. Okay, so we're halfway there. We've done a massive amount of damage. Pending up the queen, saving my ass this game. 
So end of the round, enemies now will get a hunter and they move. So they're going to move to uh, probably up here is the fastest way to get to me. They're all ch <laughs> they're all chasing me now. I've got a lot. I've got to kill this enemy next soon because it's going to get me. Uh, this ready's up. So that's fine. End the round. Place one doing the green agenda. Isn't a green agenda in play? That's fine. End the round. Place a resource there. It doesn't really do much. The agenda's gone. Um, and then the uh, encounter phase. There we go. Hunt down. Place one resource on the mutated enemy of the highest fight as a mutation. The enemy readies, moves into the initial location and engages you. Then it attacks you. If no mutated enemy is in play, it gains surge. Well, that sucks. So basically, it's going to just ready up an attacker's. Which is three damage and one sanity. Oof. That sucks. That sucks. MFS phase, place uh, one resource. Each mutated enemy at Margaret at location as a mutation. Do one damage to each investigative. Each mutation. Oh, God, that sucks. Another damage again. So we're down to two health. We are getting absolutely pounded by this guy. Okay, uh, I should raid up. My bad, sorry. I forgot to draw a card as well. Backstab, oof, that's good. Um, in resource, because a lone, lone wolf. Right, so what we're going to do here is we could evade. We're going to use our last pen of the Queen Charm. Uh, put that aside to choose a location and evade the enemy with a free action. Pen of the Queen is amazing, it's a free evade. We're then going to use backstab to deal. Uh, to fight, use it evade instead of uh, combat. So we have five evade against three, which should be enough. Minus one, it deals two damage. Uh, one's one for the fight, has one health left. Can we kill this guy? So we should be fine now. Just get the pistol, fire the pistol. Does one damage anyway, because it's exhausted. Draw a token. Zero, yeah, just about killed the big bad enemy. That was insanely hard. I thought I was gonna lose then. It's finally done. It's defeated resolution four. Fantastic. That was a struggle. So, resolution four reads uh, there's quite a, seven in terms of resolutions you can do. Uh, resolution four reads uh, green blood and sticky pus erupts from the beast car carapace as it collapses, growing with such force that it rumbles through the earth. Thanks to your haste, you have felled the beast before it could grow too powerful to stop. Even in its infancy, it was a tremendous foe. You watch and have a revulsion as its body dissolves into sallow ichor, some paradise is fainted out to be. With its egg hatched and the thing destroyed, you hope that the cult of Arkas will disperse, though you fear that retribution may someday come in return for your meddling. We get to add the Cloak of Outer Realms to our deck. And we also get the Blade of Arcat Story Assets, and XP equal to the value of each card you display. So that's it for the playthrough of the uh, Melted Gods. So as you can see, um, if I didn't if I went through the acts first, if I, did, if I managed to kill the cult enemies, this comes into play, the whole dimension, and your goal is basically just to seal it. You place clues around it, six clues per group, and you seal off, and we complete the game and we win. Um, we got, unfortunately, we got a lot of green cards came out of the, the counter deck first, made the green enemies win. Change the factor a little bit, you can get the blue enemy out, the blue god, uh, which is the Salinus, this big thing here. We might get the red god, the Ezen, I can't say it, Ezen, Ren, Razil. Um, so there's, there's about five, four or five enemies you can get for this, which is pretty good. And that's it for this playthrough. Uh, I'm going to add those to my deck now, and then do a playthrough of the next um, Inside Conspiracy expansion Mythos pack, the uh, Devil's Reef. Uh, any comments, uh, let me know down below. Leave a like if you subscribe, appreciate that, and thanks for watching.